In 1983, a new club opened in Chicago, the Music Box. Its DJ Ron Hardy had an intensity that took clubbing to a whole new dimension. This was Ron's club. This was definitely in nobody else's. It was owned and ran by Robert Williams, but it was Ron Hardy's club. He would never, ever um, not be there. You know, the kids would not even come if he wasn't there. Ron had people just, I don't know, losing their minds down there. You would hear this music. I mean, you didn't have to be this close. I mean, as soon as you turn the corner, you just hear this thumping, beating music. It was the loudest music I'd ever heard in my life. I mean, it physically should be. I'm not talking about like emotionally I'm talking about physically it was so loud that it would move me in my you it would move me when they bring in the bass boom 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 I would shake right like that Ronnie would bring you keep you going and keep you going that's what they call him heart attack Hardy he would keep you going and going and going until you like just actually have a heart attack <laughs> and then all I know is the people were screaming Ron Hardy's name Ron Hardy Ron Hardy pump that Ron Hardy doing all this and I was like oh, nobody screamed like that for me before there will never be another place like that where Ron Hardy was doing what he was doing. I mean this man, it was like voodoo with dance music, you know? If I had to think about it today, or if I was thinking about it when I was playing records every time, I wouldn't play. I would stop because I'd look at these people, I'd look at these clubs, I'd say this is bullshit and I would just leave. That's why I can't think about it because there's no, there's no comparison. It, it, pay, it, makes, it, it just makes everything else shit. He opened every night with Welcome to the Pleasure Dome. He played real fast. That's because he was high on heroin and things were kind of sounding slow to him, you know. So he speeded it up. <laughs> and in doing so, he speeded the party up. It's all type of drugs went around there. Yeah, I mean, a acid was big, um, MDA, MDA was big. MDA, which is a precursor of ecstasy. You know, an MDA <laughs> and stuff like that, you just mixed it in, in a cocktail and or, gulped it down. Or, or, or eat it, or lick it. Yeah, or, or well, licking yeah. it was a hard way to take that shit, boy. Oh, my God. I mean, that's just like straight, straight yeah. into your system, you know. That and it tasted cute. terrible. Welcome to the pleasure. We were kind of into this punk out here and playing music like um, like some of the Blondie tunes and uh, the B-52s. Rock Lobster. And when they did the part where they said, down, 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 everybody went down on the ground. We'd come out of craft work and go in the, uh, you know, one nation under a groove. <laughs> so it was like a really weird time for music because you had all these black kids dancing to punk music. Basically, when we were doing the punk out age, it was basically you would take a woman, you would bend her over, and you were just there, just basically grinding on her ass, dancing. This was punking out. And that kind of thing, when jacking came about, it just kind of carried over from that. <laughs> jacking, uh, uh, first became aware of jacking at the music box. It was just part of the language, part of the culture, just people say, you know, I'm going to go down to the box, you know, I'm going to jack my body. It would be like maybe one girl, and it would be seven guys dance with one girl, and they, she'll be in the middle, and they would be in a circle around her, and they would jack, which was like they, she might be bent over or something, they would be standing behind her. Guys jacking women, guys jacking guys, girls jacking girls. Jacking with this fucking speaker was always a, a hometown favorite. Or the wall. You know? Or the wall, <laughs> whatever was handy. If you were lucky enough to have a person with you, then yeah, you're jacking to that person. But if you didn't, you find a pole, you find a wall, it a doorway. You just get on the door and you just jack, 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 jack in your pocket. 
all night long. Okay. And, and, yeah, and it was also really yeah. kind of contagious. You know, once you would start in one part of the dance floor, before you knew it, you were yeah, engaged the dance floor. in this oh, sexual yeah. pantomime. I've even heard some stories about more than just the jacking going on behind the speakers. And I mean, you could do all sorts of freak shit on the floor. You know, I mean, no shit. You could be grabbing girls' breasts. You could be putting your finger in, in, in certain places, you know, I mean, uh, on the TV floor. Watch <laughs> yeah, 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 this TV, right, sorry, sorry. In the music box, they were having sex. <laughs> you yeah. know. You could do all sorts of unspeakable things on the dance floor, but that was on the dance floor. That was like its own world. Once the lights came community. on and the party was over with. Yeah, then you were going home. This place is probably responsible for some children. Everybody that I took there, uh, it changed their lives. Everybody, it did. It inspired everybody I know.